We steal the waves in the air and we never give them back. We are. 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 Lo-fi poli sci. Yes, we are. Lo-fi poli sci podcast coming at you with that lo-fi global news. And if you couldn't already tell, we are back in NOLA Lo-Fi Studios, a.k.a. My closet. But straight to it, the news fresh off that press. And let's start off with Latin America in Brazil and an update to the ridiculousness of President Bolsonaro. That's right, when you think he couldn't be any more of it, well, you fill in the blank. But he's up in the ante, oh yeah. He's now telling his supporters at a rally yesterday that only God can remove him from power. I mean... What can you say to a guy, a president no less, that makes a comment like this? I don't know, maybe good luck not being struck by lightning or something? Or maybe that's some bad juju and gree gree. You know, you don't want that kind of voodoo on you, man. Ah, uh, and remember this, though. The election in Brazil for president isn't until October 2022. It's over a year away. And he's already going like this. Oh, yeah. We'll let you know more when we find out. Anyway, from Brazil, let's head west, over the Pacific Ocean, and on to Afghanistan. So the latest update, the interim government is being formed by the Taliban, and wouldn't you know, even though they said they would respect women's rights, they don't have a single woman in the ruling government. I mean, for real, how are you going to respect women's rights if you don't have any women in government? Question mark, question mark. I mean, sadly, this is no surprise, and we've been saying that all the positive messages that the Taliban have been putting forward is nothing but smoke and mirrors. It was all about them consolidating power, and then after that, doing as they wish, just like they did before. And I'm going to make a projection here, that once the year ends and next year's Freedom House numbers are being computed, Afghanistan is going to be ranked as one of the most authoritarian countries in the world with one of the lowest 0 to 100 scores in civil liberties and civil rights. Now, this is a projection I sincerely hope I am wrong in. But from all the dots and connecting them to see where we're going, well, you can do the math. We'll keep you updated moving forward. All right, people, it's time for one of our favorite segments, though. We're going to switch gears here a bit and go to the game. Are we landlocked or not? Today, we'll be capping off our Africa edition before we move on next week to Europe. And remember, it's as simple as I'll give you five countries and you have five to ten seconds to decide if the country is indeed landlocked, meaning no water on its borders, or not. And let's jump right into it and keep score to see how much of that lo-fi loot you can earn all the way to the end of the semester. Number one, Morocco. Are we landlocked or not? Five seconds. And you know that old black and white movie, Casablanca? It's set in Morocco, Casablanca, Morocco. But more and more, I find very few people these days have seen that movie. But they surely know a lot of the best lines. Lines like, I think this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. You know, it's a great line. I love it. I love it. And three, two, one. Morocco is, in fact, not landlocked. Nope, not at all. We'll talk about that in a bit. Number two, Algeria. Are we landlocked or not? And five, four, three, two, one. Algeria is not landlocked. All right. Now I'm wondering, have you got two for two right now? Let's keep going, though. Number three, Tunisia. Are we landlocked or not? Five seconds. You know, it's been a bit sad to watch as Tunisia is slipping away from the gains it made during the Arab Spring. But Lofi Nation out there, this story is far from over. And three, two, one. Is Tunisia landlocked? It is not. No, indeed. And number four, Libya. Is it landlocked or not? Seven, six. Who says you have to start a countdown at five? Four, two. And who says you have to say every single number? One, zero. Libya is not landlocked. That's right. And number five, our last one for the day. Egypt. Are we landlocked or not? And ten, eight. Six, four, two, zero. Egypt is 
Not landlocked, that's right. And in fact, we just did the entire northern coast of Africa, from west to east. Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, Libya, and Egypt, all bordering the Mediterranean Sea. And Morocco, also bordering the Atlantic Ocean. And right in, what score did you get today? And at what point did you realize we were just doing the northern African coast, from west to east? Now let's head more east, over to the Philippines, to talk about a man who could most certainly be a contention for yesterday's list of the biggest dictators in the world, though he hasn't been in power that long. However, current President Duterte is most certainly trying to change that. He has officially accepted the nomination to be the next vice president. I mean, really, what a dictator in the making. Am I right? Am I right? Oh, and don't take my word for it. Just look at the thousands of deaths he's directly responsible for, and he's taken responsibility for, from his war on drugs and the extrajudicial killing of people in the streets of the Philippines. Some estimates, over 6,000 people. But we'll let you know more as this all plays out, because there's still a bit of time before those elections take place. And from the Philippines, we're heading back west, way west, to Europe to our continuing coverage of a story that should be finished but isn't finished and may never be finished because reasons? We're talking Brexit, that's right. I mean, come on, people. UK, EU, after five years, you still haven't gotten your shit together. You made a deal. You signed it. It was done. But now the UK wants to redo the deal on the Northern Ireland border details and trade. And of course, this is all driven by the man whose hair cannot be tamed, Prime Minister Boris Johnson of the UK, a man who said Brexit would be easy-peasy. And no, he didn't say that. But if you know anything about Boris, you know he surely said something more ridiculous than that. Something about badgers or moles or microwaves. His hair isn't the only thing whack. Mm -mm -mm. But Boris's team in the UK want to redo the Northern Ireland part of the agreement. And the EU? Guess what they said. They say shenanigans. Uh, we think not. You signed it. And a question to you, lo-fi listeners out there. Do you think Brexit will ever truly be done? Write in. I'm curious your thoughts. And a last piece of news to send you on your way for the day. From NPR's science section, the headline, NASA helicopter has been zipping about on Mars, paving the way for drone exploration. And really, I picked this story because I thought it was just plain cool. I mean, really, people, we've heard about the Mars rover, the moon and lunar rover before. Wheeled vehicles slowly trotting about and discovering things. It seems like drones are the most logical next step. And it kind of makes me think, why don't we have thousands of drones flying about on the moon right now, for instance? I mean, unless we've completely mapped it and it would just be pointless. But regardless, I think this is kind of a cool new technique for space exploration in the galaxy today. And that is a brief snapshot of what's going on in the world today. And although I'm back in NOLA, I know many of you are not. Send me words, give me thoughts, send me your news of what you got going on today. And let me know you're okay. And if you need anything, always remember that Lo-Fi poli is more than just me. It's the we that we be. Peace and well-being to all my human beings out there. Much love and always the best. Pickering, signing off, but never out. <laughs>